dog because she's nine now. She has a she has bone cancer. Mm. Yeah, and she got diagnosed like two months ago, and the doctors made it sound like uh, you didn't start planning. Or like what you're gonna do now? And like I was heartbroken with this baby in the yard, and I just like cried and cried and cried, and all these crazy thoughts are going through my head, and I like called the vet and was like, "Oh, I'm going to die soon." Do house calls, and like my neighbor's brother in law, he's a vet, he does house calls, and so I'm like planning like her end of life party and party and then put her down. And that was like two months ago, and like I think she's in a lot of pain a lot of times, but like the the shock of finding out that like someone you love, you know, has cancer, you know, mm -hmm. she just got so much life in her. They, you know, they made it sound like it was like. You know, she is going to die eventually, but it might not be from the, the cancer. She could just die from the age because she's like a huge breed. And she's like, she's so old for her age. She's got two of the tumor in her arm. So she's the happiest dog. Yeah. So she still like plays every day and she eats and guards the home and she's just the happiest dog and it's like I can't believe that like the thought of like those thoughts of like ending my dog's life but it's like racing through my head because another oh I'm good for now. Um I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you. But I'm enjoying nourishing myself. Thank you so much. Actually yeah yeah thanks for inviting me. Like I have so many interactions with people when they're like I'm gonna try and come, and that's like the nice way of saying. Uh -huh. I can't do it that time. I'm gonna try. I was like, how is that Oh, yeah. He can, like, he can't do that fast. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mom Art Session 3. I'm glad you can be here too. Wherever you are. We have the remote controller can mess with the YouTube's. So, you know. Today's topic is about generosity. Um, do you know much about Walmart, Sarah? So, today I want to kind of try and just let you be like a member of the community and hang out with us and um, see what we see. So we'll see how that goes. Are you, do you have any aversion to being on the oh, internet? Okay. okay, yeah. Cool. This is Megan. Oh, hi! This is Ria, it's her house. Thank you for hosting us. This is Sarah. Yeah. Jenny. <laughs> um, so Genevieve's been coming to Mama sessions. This is number three. So she's you've been to all three, right? I've been to all three. Yeah. You're Genevieve. Yeah. This is Genevieve. This Hi. Is Ryan, this is Sarah. This is Andrea. I'm Victoria. Um. Oh, it's on this. Yeah. It's right there. The big. She's the big old. old. She's. You have. Oh, I got you a beer too, so. But I'm good at drinking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Mama in general, do you guys have a, do you know what Mama is? Or, I mean, do you know what I think Mama is? You're a kite flying, kite flying, kite. <laughs> You're being flown by a kite, yeah, right. Yeah, um, I can see Mama as a counterpart to Pop Art and like, nestled closer to the home than the factory. And not that there's anything wrong with factories, um, but there are some things wrong with factories. Right? Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Oops. Um, <laughs> Do you want to make my makeup? I just made this big. Let's see. I don't know really how to minimize. Small. Um, sorry. 
Um, Hi. How are you doing? Wow, there's three people watching this. Oh my gosh. Cool. <laughs> yeah, sure. If any of you know how to um, minimize <laughs> Do you know how to minimize this window? Or like not minimize it, but like make it like one of my own windows. Go like pick up the only one. Okay, well that's not really perfect. Thank you. Well, I don't. Hey, Chico. I don't have that kind of. Yeah, you did it. You did the right thing, maybe. Let's see. Where did he go? Where'd you guys go now? I don't know. Oh, Press escape, said Fanny. I did. Chico, you're such a good job. Chico, huh? Come on, Chico. Chico. Press escape, said Fanny. I did. And I'm watching myself. Oh my god. I know. It's like a lot of feeling. Yeah, it's a good. Okay. Sorry, guys. So I'm like. It's still working. It's whatever. I don't have to. Is it still going to work? I don't know. I put your oven on. I turned the oven on. It's whatever. I don't have to. It still works. I don't have to see it. I don't know how to invite you, though. No. You can tell me how to do that. Getting all strange here. Yeah, it's just fun. Okay, so I want to show, I want to start off with a video, which, can be yes? Counterpart to pop art, and I think it nestles closer to the home than the factory. And yes, what you, as you said, like some of the kind of issues that factories are known for are kind of some of the issues that are might not be known for, but should be known for. And um, I guess thinking about this um, session of class. And thinking about generosity as something that I inherently associate with mom art. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I can't find it. Sorry. Manny says, close the tab with the stream on your laptop. It's causing feedback. This one? Um, so, so thinking about generosity actually and like thinking, cause like I've always kind of, I have had this kind of value judgment thing attached to like mom art, maybe like it's a counterpart to pop art, but like, you know, like a better, <laughs> better counterpart to pop art. But like, then I was thinking about generosity and thinking about that as something that we think of as inherently kind of good, right? Like it's one of the seven virtues and like being like giving to others is something that I kind of associate with generosity. And um, then I looked at the etymology of the word generous and it's about um, like filial lineage actually. So the word like generosity and generation like have a lot of relationship to each other. And so it's actually about like 
that giving is a noble thing, but it's also who you're giving to, right? That these kind of like streams of knowledge and streams of wealth and streams of like access, like are given to members of the family. And so it's actually like brought up a lot about like, to me about like who's being generous to who. The fact that the family itself, like, is not this, like, just romantic thing. It's actually, like, an exclusive, like, literally an exclusive, like, social formation that um, can be really, like, dangerous and fighting. I don't know, I don't know why it took me that long to actually, like, put that into the group. But this is one that, this actually such a mess that it can be so um, I'm kind of like, I don't know if Mom Art is as good or as like, beautiful as I thought it was. But um, I do think that there is something valuable about giving and about examining the role that giving has in art and how I think that the artists whose work will look at me um, like acknowledge the fact that there's like an ongoing like giving and receiving and the fact that it's this kind of these mobius strips like that get flipped around so mm -hmm. the giving becomes the receiving and the receiving becomes the giving and like it's not just like the the relationship between the recipient and the giver is not like just binary do you make any chips that are non-binary or are your chips like binary chips I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I just did Yeah, I just uh, everything called badge badges. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. I don't get to YouTube. It's it's on YouTube. Oh, okay, cool. So I can just type in. You can even just type in. So I'm gonna start off with this kind of a. Um, Video of a work by Jamali Ayo. Um, in mm -hmm. Jamali Ayo is an amazing conceptual and like performance artist. Um, and I'm um, ashamed she works in multimedia. And um, she's actually going to be one of the speakers for this uh, one. I'm really excited about it. And um, she's going to be really happy that she um, thinks that she's bringing her work in a place of gender is a good place. But so I'm excited to share this with you. I just want to just like watch it as a Your gift, AmeriCare's packs for you around the world. Delivering emergency medical supplies for which no other health care. Rebuilding after my case. Do you want to take some reparations? Do you want to take some reparations today? Reparations, you can pay right here. Very simple. Can you guys see? Do you want to take some reparations? Reparations today? You can pay right here. It's very convenient. Do you guys want to pay uh, some reparations today? Hello. Would you like to make a reparations payment today? Do you want to pay some reparations today? Uh, I'm totally uh, 
videos and then mostly just like talk to you guys and let's see. So what do you guys think about generosity? Is it something you think about often? I feel like it's definitely something you're taught as like when you're younger that it's like, you know, sort of casually a virtue, but it's like becomes less and less discussed as you get older. Mm -hmm. It's not like people like talk about like very, I feel like it's not very like, it's, it's not something that's like taken very seriously. You know, it's not something that's like discussed academically. Mm -hmm. It's like an yeah. important thing. It's not like a like valid point of conversation in like any kind of like serious way a lot of time. Mm -hmm interesting that you say like academically because I do agree with that but I was thinking in terms of generosity um, like imaginatively too because because um, like I didn't know about this um, performance and protest verse, but I think it's really interesting because after I um, what, what should, that's, I have really read the Hunger Games I haven't or like seen <laughs> Um, heard about it. I read the first two books, but um, anyway, I mean, there's a lot of dystopian like stuff out there, and Hunger Games is, I think, the only one that I kind of read, and I read it because I was teaching middle schoolers, and I thought it would be engaging, um, and it was. But so anyway, my point is that um, you know, imaginatively, we can connect with like this dystopian reality and like sympathize with these characters. And I was thinking, you know, almost if you asked people like 
Do you support reparations for Katniss Everdeen, like District 13, where the, you know, people would be like, yeah, like they were screwed over. Like all those people in the Hunger Games, they deserve something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's like, if it comes to a real life um, situation that already happened, mm -hmm. that's what I think too about dystopia. I'm like, what dystopia? Like, you know, I get it. Like every age, we have a lot of, things that can go wrong in our world. And a mm -hmm. lot of things are going wrong. A yeah. lot of things went wrong. So to me, it's just really interesting that people can't like make an imaginative leap in terms of being generous, um, like historically or current day kind of thing. A lot of people are like, just get over it. Like just get over slavery or, you know, yeah, a lot of genocide white people and stuff least, like that. Yeah. yeah like why? happened so long ago like why would people still be affected by it or angry about it and I, like to me i'm just like how would people not be affected by it like generation generation but so anyway like to me it's i think academically not taken seriously but i also think it's like an imaginative issue mm -hmm. and imagination doesn't really have that much of a place in a lot of academics now mm -hmm. it kind of depends you know your teachers and where you go but that's kind of what I was thinking about. Um, but yeah, actually, so the generation, the generosity, I don't know. I feel it's like a lot there. Not dealt with academically in the same way it's kind of viewed, like you say, in an adult. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's viewed with some suspicion. Like too large an act of kindness would be viewed. Chunk, like we're, yeah, we're definitely looking for the angle. And right. then I no wonder such thing if, as a free lunch or whatever. Is and the reparation is really like a like a motion of generosity. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Or even that guilt, but to no. just shut them up. Well, it's generous. It's like it's generous to like let a white person off the hook of their guilt with by making a token payment i mean i feel like that's that's generous like but if, is that in the spirit of generosity for that for that in, person in order to be generous there has to, to be a spirit of giving behind it <laughs> yeah and then also really generous a part i wonder about um that and and i i have to wonder about my wondering of it is um there are i'm sure a fair amount of um by now, there's a fair amount of black people in the U.S. whose ancestors are not American slaves. Still, though, they, like, are, that, that's, like, not the point. I don't think it really but it, but it's, like, is slavery is just, like, one piece of this, like, larger, like, wash of troubles that are, have been, like, beset upon black people by white and, people and in how, American and elsewhere. Like, it's not, like, it's, I feel like slavery is just, like, um, I can't really talk about it in a way that probably makes it like. Well, and I just also that 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 the reason I wonder about that wondering is because it's so it's kind of maybe a hallmark of privilege to be able to ignore the like the real crux of it because there's like side things to examine like to say like well but was d do these people really feel against the effects still of slavery is like just such a well i mean it's yes yeah, generous is like with one of many way to injustices let and violences that have and actually dealing with that like, a, just, know, like oh if i give 25 cents now i don't have to well here's anymore. another argument then there's like several ways to actually enslave a culture not just anyway you know, let's talk about gen yeah. like i don't want to be like a room full of like white passing women talking about slavery like that's not like that. i don't think that it's probably going to go to many like good places. so why did you choose that video as a mode to express generosity I think that I wanted to like start with Damali's work because it kind of like puts generosity, I don't know, I think that it like puts it in the larger like perspective or like, I, I don't know, I feel like as like to me, reparations are kind of one of the like, like you said, like does it go, like it's not generous really. Like it's a kind of giving that is an owing and not like, like it looks generous 
on the surface, but it's not. It's not. And so kind of it just like kind of throws that problem like right there. That's which what which I is what I meant about it being generous to the person making the reparation because it's like it's actually with such a to small them. token yeah. of their effort, they get to be free of thinking about it anymore or re like realizing the like truth of it. Maybe they did their like one little thing, like clicking like. Maybe it's more on generous issue on not to mm -hmm. actually give something of monetary value, but just the action of acknowledging, you know, is more generous than the money itself. You're so yeah. tickled right now, they can't. No, yeah. well, I, I'm just thinking about like you, me, and Megan like arguing about stuff, and the like, because me and Megan and Andrea have been friends for like 20 years, and like when I thought it was just going to be the three of us here doing this, <laughs> like. Um, session, um, I really kept thinking about this experience we had about 20 years ago when we all hitchhiked down to Portland um, and went to the Quest. <laughs> we didn't get into the Quest because it was too late. And then, like, ended up in this um, garage, actually, like, we were, like, downtown Portland at, like, 1 o'clock in the morning. I ran into my friend Dustin Gruder, who I used to have a week from that I was talking about, like one of Abe's friends, and was like, we're like stuck in downtown Portland, like can you give us a ride back to Sandy? And they did. And it was like four o'clock in the morning, they were like going to some house party, and I was like, well, we didn't have anywhere to go. And um, so Bugs, who was one of my neighbors actually, who like grew up in that like house across the street from kind of that big house, mm -hmm. um, he was like, well, there's like a detached garage outside of my house, not that house, but like the house he lived in at that point. And he's like, there's a mattress in it. You guys can like hang out in the detached dirt garage as long as you want, like just be quiet. And so like we got like dropped off at this detached garage and like couldn't go to sleep because like we had to be somewhere at eight. Go ahead, go camping. Yeah, the family yeah, reunion. Um, but we had to be very quiet. <laughs> and so we spent like three hours arguing about like what was most important, thought, action, or emotion. Or what, what was most, as I remember, it was what was most essentially human. Yeah. Thought, action, or emotion. I said that. She said action. Okay. That's it's a really big Still? Less pleased oh, about that. Oh, there you go. Okay. Sometimes. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Just go on but so like listening to us I guess, it's the same. yeah and I kind of thought that sounds gonna happen um but like generosity as a thing or like I appreciate everything Okay, because you told me to bring my bag over. My friend is an artist and she is firmly anti, this is her work, she's firmly anti-copyright. And your comment about generosity being of generations, she really, um, she, I guess, believes really in the, like, the cultural zeitgeist. Like, it's silly to think that anything is 100% yours because everything that we manifest is sort of the, like, end result of where of everything we've absorbed and i think that's an interesting tie in with the idea of generosity being and she like, made that package oh yes yeah. yes <laughs> and she um she doesn't copyright any of her things gwen seymour her name is gwen seymour and she's an amazing artist that is exactly an important part is not just to show her work and say she doesn't copyright like it's free but that it's her um and that she has her place in line of artists with everybody else and and came from artists and other artists will see her work and that kind of linking of all the times many ages yeah come never like taking that correlation between generosity and generation i think that's really interesting i mean it's not me it's rome or whatever it's yeah. rome i think but um so any other like opening remarks about generosity? You guys, you have some stuff to say? I don't mean to like, like, 
wash out the differences between white and white passing either because I know I'm sure that your experiences as like brown women in America are like different than mine as like a non like somebody that does like kind of like come from a very white place and so you know but when yeah, I, like, I would say I'm often actually get yes, but a lot of times I like no I benefit from white privilege so I would say that I Anyway, yeah. So I guess I wasn't ready to kind of like parse out the like significance of that video, and I should be, but I'm still not. Sorry, I didn't know I needed to do that. But but so I just I kind of wanted to just like start with that video and like let it live as like kind of like a thing to kind of like benchmark <laughs> generosity against in a way. Like I guess that. Yeah, I didn't see a lot of generosity in that video, <laughs> even as she was like passing the reparations back out. Back out, yeah, I thought that it's was only yeah. because it, they want her to speak. Yeah. That's not true. I think. I think the act of like conceiving the project though, and like carrying it out, is like a very sin. generous, like. But I hope that we can maybe like revisit Damali's work in a few minutes after, like, and give to like. She is doing, she's currently doing this project called Unspeakable. And maybe we can like give something to her that, is, that she'll be able to use in that project. Or if you guess what? Um, but so there, I wanted to bring up the, the work of this theorist named Hito Steril, who um, wrote a article called is a museum a factory? Hito is like kind of a prolific academic um, work. Have you read no, their work? No, that sounds super interesting. Right? right, as a factory. And I, I like museums actually a lot. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Cool. I mean, yeah. So yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think that Hito's work is pretty critical of museum. the art world as kind of this. Well, the article is a museum of factory in particular um, starts with this image of a like a workers like this this piece of political cinema that was um, in 1968, which you know everybody kind of knows as this like do you guys know about like 1968 as kind of this code word for like political revolution in um, Europe? Like it's kind of 1968 a lot of, like revolution was going on, like kind of hippie stuff. Um, but so in 1968, there was this political cinema that was shown inside a factory. And um, she kind of uses this as this symbol, because now it's shown in museums and kind of the blurring of the lines between the work because like, at, she says that like at that moment like a lot of actual like production was happening inside of factories and like now the production that's happening on this planet which is debatable but is like shifting towards cultural production and shifting towards like affect economies and it's shifting like towards like the work that's happening in museums and the blurring between the work that's on the walls and the work of the um like museum goers, mm -hmm. like maybe they are the ones that are actually like doing the work inside of a museum. So I think that like that article to me kind of also kind of highlights the the way that generosity is a two way street. Like you like you were saying, Megan, like the those that are receiving and those that are giving, like there's this kind of like interrelationship between those things. And we're always like giving and receiving from different directions. And even like, like I think traditionally it's seen that like the museum goers are like, like benefiting from mm -hmm. the interaction, but it's actually the, they are doing work as well. And like the labor, she said, she talks about the labor of looking and, um, being generous to the artists, being charitable, not <laughs> being, um, you know, it's like you, 
How do I say? By appreciating it. Here and there, is that what you mean? Like by appreciating the art for what it is, whether whether they get on with it or they even like it, you know, just appreciating it. I'm going to bring up some stuff that I just saw that Mandy has texted me, and I think it's um, important to note. And um, it's important to think about how society slash economy wouldn't exist without the free labor, quote unquote, generosity of women, especially women of color, and the idea of womanhood, especially non white womanhood in the West, seems so much like a way of naturalizing not only unwaged reproductive labor, both literally making humans and reproducing culture slash whiteness, the laborer, I don't know. Also, slavery is still legal as punishment in prison and prison is full of black people. So this is coming from a black um, trans Dominican. So somebody who is living the reasons uh, for like problems. Sure. Um, it's important to think about how society slash economy wouldn't exist without the free labor, in parentheses and quotation marks, generosity of women, especially women of color. And the idea of womanhood, especially non-white womanhood in the West, seems so much like a way of naturalizing not only unwaged reproductive labor, both literally making humans and reproducing cultures slash whiteness slash labor. I don't know. Also, slavery is still legal as punishment in prison. Prisons are full of black people. I feel like there's a really interesting contradiction around um, generosity and care and it's been like reproductive labor mm -hmm. where yeah. you are supposed to give it, like you will literally be shamed or socially shunned for not giving it. Mm -hmm. But then when you do give it, like one of the ways, like people, people might, people might like refer to it as like lovingness or generosity, but then, you know, sometimes there's this like frustration of being like, actually, like I am socially compelled to do this. Mm -hmm. So like, right. I don't even have the right to be generous. Like I don't, nothing I do, it can even really be like the. Because the, it's forced, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't choose to be generous. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about uh, reproducing? Well, I'm talking about like any of the any of the like gender gender like material acts of reproduction, whether it's like actual reproduction, care for children, care for other people. And, and like, Mark, because Marx made this false dichotomy between productive and reproductive labor, yeah. that I think has like really like been like latched onto that I think it's really fake. And yeah. sorry to interrupt you. Oh no. But um this like dichotomy between productive and reproductive labor and like it's used to like trivialize the work of women and like the work that women have historically been doing and also yeah put it in that category of like this is like you know coming from like their benevolence or like they should feel good because we're allowing them to like do this work that's like family centered and like reproductive which is basically about the maintenance or the care for human yeah. beings or they'll be like, she's so kind, or like, she's so caring, but like, if, you know, the like, theoretical she, like, or feminized person wasn't kind or caring, they would be like, socially shunned, mm -hmm. so she doesn't even own her own caringness, she yep. doesn't even own her own kindness. Right, so, yeah. 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 And actually, so working in a factory has given me, like, I could see that anyway in the world, but it is interesting because the nature of our work is just like, I mean, it's mechanized and it's like, you know, boom, boom, boom. And so I actually have become, I would say then, you know, I can see where um, a couple of things I want to say. I mean, just first of all, like, you know, stereotypes of, women being like either moody or um this and that, but like expecting women to be generous enough to put up with other people's moods so in this mm -hmm. production environment <laughs> that kind of thing and so oh, i yeah, actually so <laughs> and i feel it's an act of generosity towards myself like over the years of working here it's been good for me actually because i can i've become way more comfortable with just like i'm not really rude to people like 
either other women or men that I work with. I mean, I don't think I probably am sometimes, but like the thing is, it's kind of, I've become more generous with myself. Like I don't have to, I'm not worried about that person. Like I don't, it's not my problem. It's not my job. Mm -hmm. I'm to be respectful and I have my boundaries, but like, I guess what I'm saying is this job has actually been good for me to establish mm -hmm. boundaries mm -hmm. and because I can see so clearly, you know, just like the differences in what's expected. Right. But in order to do my job, which is the exact same thing mm -hmm. as a man in this job, I'm more able to just kind of like lay it down, at least for myself and then act it out. And so, so actually like this factory has been a really good place for me to learn about generosity. <laughs> um, <laughs> which looks like the opposite sometimes but i you know i don't there's know a big difference I, i'm hearing there's a big difference between being nice and being kind you I can be, be less nice and be more kind i'm so sorry yeah I have to to go. Go. okay I just, there's something i think generous. there's like something I mean, up on austin's bike um, here okay but um, i'm really sorry no it's okay thank you for coming thank you for coming but, but we think we're being trained. Oh, sorry. We need to get boundaries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I'm just sort of like, oh. Jenny has to go. I'm sorry. You have to leave. Yeah. Did you drive? Um, my friend is outside. Back it was nice year. to meet you. It was really nice to meet you, too. Yeah. Maybe I'll meet you at another Mom Jenny? Yeah, I know that. I really like to listen to you. Thank you. I will see you. Okay, do you know your way? Okay, yeah, that way. Right? Yeah. Hi. 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 Uh, I don't mean to be the only one eating this food. It's just, I, I work kind of on a clock, right? So it's like my break time started at whatever. So it's like, yeah. <laughs> I think so, that this kind of brings like a good, a good, um, because one of the other readings that I wanted to kind of bring up briefly was uh, Paolo Freire, who is this um, thinker who is really well known for his book called The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. And in, in the very first, um, and it, it's revolutionary, it's like, it came out of his work with um, like Brazilian, the Brazilian underclass and um, trying to find out a like method of education that would actually like empower, be empowering to the, them and not just like be like this top down, like reproduction of like the strategies that existed in Brazilian society and around the world. Um, but the, in the very first chapter, he talks about false generosity and how it's um, actually the generous, the, the, what he considers false generosity is like, um, the oppressor, like giving to the oppressed, but also um, maintaining this like imbalance of power between the two, um, or the two like groups. Um, and he talks about true generosity is actually the kind of work that comes from below and dismantles or like unravels the systems that are in place that keep people dependent on each other or keep people in power or oppressing one another and I kind of like I wanted to kind of look at that like as related to motherhood and um to me it kind of brought up stuff about like how as a mom are you a mom? um or like I mean whatever we're all part of mom artist the fact that we all like have momness in our lives um but like being interested with like the body and like soul of this tiny like, child that came out of my body <laughs> like um being responsible for her um like and a part of that is very instructive and very like educational. And there is this imbalance of power that's like built into that from the very beginning. And like, but it kind of fades over time, right? Like you, the, the imbalance like fades. So I don't know.
What? Overcome by how glad I am to be with you guys right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're part of that too. Just like really hit me. Do you? I mean, the the power of the the power dynamic. It, like the, it, it yeah. fades because you know, as you raise the child and you teach them everything you know, you know, eventually, like the bottom has been pulled out. Mm -hmm. You can. Right, it's um, time to fly or whatever. Is, yeah, equals. Like, and I'm charted a little bit hopeful that they're going to be better than you. That well, yeah, gonna be that's a point where they're like them. smarter and like, stronger oh. and like are going to go further. And you provide children with the you know the tools and what they do with it. They do. Yeah, I think every parent wishes for their child to have more. Right, and there's that kind of generosity in the like Roman sense, right? Yeah. That you're giving to your child. Like that's where giving happens. Um, I kind of wonder how that like spills over into the idea of the art world and like artistic creation. Um, do you ever like want your like artwork to kind of like go out into the world and like have a life of its own? Is that something that you? I mean. Have you ever thought about your artwork in that way? The, the idea of, of, I guess, because... Or do you feel like it should always be, like, attached to, like, you? I guess it's also, like, looking at, like, Gwen's work, right? That's mm -hmm. kind of like, she's like, this should, like, have a life of its own, right? Yeah, she she wants there to be a home for all of her work. And um, I think you you're if you're compelled to create something, it's starting from you. But the idea that it's just for you doesn't seem quite right because mm -hmm. to, have, to have it be, like you were saying, in a museum, appreciated for what it is, not necessarily things or not held as important because of some reason that's beyond your artistic control, but just to be held like in its very own. Maybe what Sarah space. was saying about being, you know, creatively intelligent. Maybe we don't get it, but maybe um, coming up with it. I don't know. I had a thought, but it's not. What is it? It's it. I, I think I already said it. It's not, <laughs> not cohesive. I think that if if I um, make a photograph of somebody that is really dear to me. But then somebody that doesn't know that, if I make a photograph of somebody that's dear to me, but then somebody who doesn't know that person at all feels um, some spark or attachment to that image without knowing the person, but it just being like some like little soft moth foot on their heart of like common humanity that like makes them feel attached. Is that, that's enough? Or... Yeah. Yeah. That sweet, soft moth foot <laughs> on their common heart of humanity. <laughs> like... Just, well, when, when you don't know what it is that, when you can't say, well, it's because of the composition or it's because of the perspective, when you can't put like a tangible, concrete reason on why you're, attached to something that has nothing to do with you like something mm -hmm. really concrete like you know a person a, something so specific that it becomes kind of general yes i think and i think that like you i think i thank you for bringing up your uh, photography as kind of an example of this because it, in Hito's work and kind of something that i want to think about and look at is the, or like a, some question that I had that I don't know if you guys want to talk about, but like how photography and cinema, especially even more is like, is like a collaborative endeavor and like how, like I think that more than, I mean, all art is obviously collaborative, at least to me, like it, like has its inspiration and it has like its recipient and it has like its materials that 
you know, most people don't pull from the ground themselves, you know, like mm-hmm. most people are like dependent upon like paint factories or whatever to like get their stuff like up and running. But like, I feel like cinema or video art like demands a lot of like direct like involvement from multiple people and like sometimes like becomes like a vehicle for only like one or two like it becomes like one person project or like two people's project and is that generous or is that like sacrifice and kind of do those two things like I don't know the guy that called me a factory that said I was gonna like be his factory and like raise his children and be his factory um get married like he's like you will be my factory yeah <laughs> and like he also said like you know what marriage is to me sacrifice oh, and like i think that like and obviously the secret like, this moment of this but like i kind of like that's a different and um oh, it's like off camera <laughs> that's gonna be <laughs> but like I think of like generosity and sacrifice and I think Genevieve is kind of like kind of touching on this like if if it's not like like what is forced generosity and I think it's kind of maybe sacrifice is the word to like encapsulate that and so when it comes to like video and cinema and photography which obviously like and like oftentimes have a human subject and like where does that subject like play in art do you like consider them uh like along with you i i do feel you not qualified them? for the question because i don't i don't um i honestly don't and i i, I don't have i want to be part of the discussion so i want to bring everything into it but when I really go to the root of it, I don't consider being an artist. Mm-hmm. And there's the reasons for that are maybe because um, thrilling for somebody to be um, sparked by anything I do is because I. It's a very for me. It's a very selfish act. It's a very like leaving everything else so I can frame this one bit that I want to remember and like to frame this bit, I want to remember I'm editing out everything else. I'm making like a really strong in the future with I, at that moment, this part thing was the thing that was important. And, and it comes with the personal story and, and showing those images to people is, is not really deliberate and it's not really like, I'm making something to communicate something. And I feel like the act of making art is so much like you're, instead of things that you're doing just for you, you're dedicating this time and space of your life. Something right, that's like art demands an audience. Okay. That's like pulled, you know, from the everything else through you and, and, when inspiration lands on you you just you're either ready for it or not but to like be working to give yourself the time and space to inspiration land on you is like you're like giving up you know comforts and like i mean anybody who has a friend who's like a struggling artist who just like won't get the grind of a job to pay the bills because they just they're just so compelled to keep doing this thing even though you know they, there's, no there's ways they suffer for it there's, there's no exactly there's no like and there's no retirement plan attached or there's no like comfort that part of it it's just like a compulsion they can't yeah and do you find that when they do like the same piece they really end up usually just giving you away because somebody else has come up with that yeah it's amazing and, and like oh here, here somebody else go. loving it is so it's like payment in that it's like I you, then you can have it. Yeah, I think that the, the art world that Peter Steril is like kind of mentioning or like addressing in their work is definitely not the. Not that you can just have struggling. it. Struggling, kind yeah. of. 
person. It's he was very talking about artists that the museum is a factory. They were talking about they, museum as a factory. Um, and, to perpetuate. Well, just, you know, those, like, you know, the art stars and the, like, the capitalist, like, kind of insulated, like, rich white guys, like, speculating on it and then also and like using the, the and yeah and like using the museum almost as like kind of like a showroom i think they talk yeah. about kind of the museum as being like the, a factory and a supermarket and like um kind of like all of these kind of like, yeah, kind like of gross. Stop auction where, yeah you, know, like, you can just show up but but there are beautiful artists that are doing like work that is generous and I think that like a couple like Damali is one of them, I think, and I would like stand behind that. The time and, spent just the, just the time I mean Yeah, right. And I feel like there's in the spirit of generosity, it's a difference between the thing that's just easy mm -hmm. for you to give. Like right. it's just easy to drop fifty cents in somebody's bucket and then be done with it. Versus like the something that's difficult to give, but right. you feel compelled beyond the difficulty of it to give it. To and I hope that we can give street. to Molly also. Like she's doing this um, project called Unspeakable, where she's collecting eleven hundred people saying to her, "I love you, to Molly." And um, maybe later we can all make videos for her. She said, I love you, Damali. And also she's potentially doing one where she where you just say, I love you. And then maybe it'll resonate with more audiences. But it's about, it's like springs from a particular place in her own like life. But um, I would, I hope that before we leave, we can get back to her. And I also want to kind of like briefly, I don't want to, I don't think there's like time enough to, really work on it, but this C.A. Conrad, who is doing work um, that I think is super, um, like, concerned with and in acknowledgement of these kind of interconnectednesses that you, Megan, have kind of brought up multiple times of, like, with when, like, the fact that, um, like, we're working, like, with inspiration and like building on things that like come before us and also like giving to like a lot of different like places and C.A. Conrad is a poet um who used to sell flowers on the side of the road for his mom and um I asked him like the reason the, the way that I first got to know C.A. Conrad was through his work called the Nina Loy portal and I had I was living in New York and my friend Melissa Tuckman actually I went over to her house and she gave me this book The Last Lunar Rydecker and she said she's um she's hopefully she's done with her PhD by now but she was doing her PhD at Princeton and she's this amazing like writer and kind of like cool girl and um I went to visit her at her like apartment in Bedsday and um she gave me this book. She was like, I have two copies of it. Do you want one? Like, she's kind of the Ryan to Curtain of poets in, of the, like, early 19th century. <laughs> and um, so she gave me this Mina, this book of Mina Lowe's poetry, and I really um, loved it. And, like, it spoke to me. And then um, probably about a year later, I was in this poetry class. Um, the only war that matters is the war against the imagination, which um, is a line from the Diana Prima poem. And it was at Bruce High Quality Foundation University. And they did this like kind of like book fair kind of night. And a couple of the like small press people like came and like brought a bunch of books to like give away actually, which I mean, it was a free art school to begin with. So like, I was like, okay. And, um, but this, so there's just like this array of like free chat books on this table and I saw this book called the Mina Loy portal and I was like Mina Loy like I love Mina Loy like and so I picked it up and the Mina Loy portal like is this somatic poetry ex ritual that was um envisioned or like come up with by C.A. Conrad who said 
you should find your favorite Mina Loy poem, print it on a piece of green paper, cut a hole in it, and then like watch the world through it, and then like take notes and write a poem out of it. And um, so it's just like this really obvious like like sense of like giving and receiving as like this like oscillation and like constant like like interrelationships hmm? like shift of your lens like between the portal and the frame you're looking through and back to what mm -hmm. and Nina Loy and C. A. Conrad and yourself and the person who made the the um Mina Loy portal that it came out as a chat book was obviously like like that was their chat book, but it was also C. A. Conrad's and it was also Mina Loy's. And to me, like I think that that kind of like um, provenance or like acknowledgement of provenance, I think is like not doesn't happen enough in the art world. That at least I think like, running because you there's such a high value placed on the the idea of original mm -hmm. like it came entirely from well yeah or like the fact that it's like a default to the like last person who touched it in a way you know i don't know we have so very much but i think that that kind of i don't want to like rush but i also wanted to kind of bring up the yeah it's coming to this project of this class together, like brought me in touch with a couple of like Damali and as well as this artist named Himishi Farah who um, came up with this project called Things to Paint. And it's a Twitter feed. And I'll see if I can bring it up here. Um, it's so cute. But <laughs> it says, hey painter, running out of ideas. <laughs> and it's just like this like long, it's like 1,220 different, things you can paint and it's just like their tweets they're as short as tweets can be i think you can like yeah. um, scroll maybe so like the physical difference between bring this one back things to paint so the physical difference between conceptual art and finance or Centerlink profit, moving slowly around the branch, resolving language. Man repeatedly whispering to female partner, you could earn as much as me one day. Or the value of dogs. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Things you can paint, right? And so when I saw this project, it automatically, like, to me, it kind of like, I don't know, to me, she's been like incredibly generous to me as a like, friend and an artist. And, um, so I think I kind of default to him as like, examples of generosity in the art world but like so and, and this project I think is one of the things that I was like so generous and just offering up these ideas like they're just like three ideas for people to and but when I was talking to him I asked him and he was like sure and I was like well can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to do this and he was like I just really wanted to highlight the like difference between a concept and a like, the idea is like, like really a small it's... like yeah of, like, of like the fact that like making a painting is like like conceptual art is like kind of valueless in a way conceptual art is like, like the gap between the two and do 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 but I think the other interesting thing is because, like, right after I had that big conversation with him, I was reaching out to Kamali about making the first dimension of this one sequel project. And she was like, I haven't really moved forward with it, but I think the concept is enough. And I was like, you know, just thinking about that idea. <laughs> and, like, that's where my own, like, has that, I mean, obviously, like, I mean, she thought of these concepts, like, that's. Generous, like the concept is not but like there's obviously like this like, like, concept. Is it the concept or the execution? Like, you can you get one. Coming up with this class. Like, 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 
uh, go in with uh, this. I'm going to look at a little bit of this project called Green Vanilla, which I first came in contact with when I was living in Istanbul. And um, I went to the Istanbul, the, there's the um, Istanbul Modern. Have you been there? So it's a modern art museum, it's like on the Bosphorus. And on Thursdays, it has free day. And so I went with my friend Sarah and we went to the Samba Modern. I wasn't like much of an art, I didn't know. I didn't like have a strong relationship to art as I do now. And so we just like went there and they're like, oh, it's the biennial. Like there's all this like busyness and all this like, like international art existing in this museum right now and um so it's really crowded it was like really fucking crowded and i remember like being drawn to this like downstairs like corner where they're showing this video art and the first piece that really spoke to me was like this really slow motion or like really like high definition this is in 2007 so like high definition wasn't really a thing yet um but it's like this person that kept like dipping their paintbrush in ink and then like tracing it through and it like kind of like dissipating in the water in a way that's really beautiful and really like peaceful. And I haven't been able to find that one, but um, the next room we went in, or I think we like went up through the museum and it was just like really crowded, like really intense. Like we ended up in this, um, in this room I was playing this piece doing a delinear, which was, um, it was Turkish people singing karaoke of the Smiths record, The World Won't Listen. Dunya de Lanier means The World Won't Listen. And um, it was by this British, or like the person that was credited with this work is Phil Collins. It's, it's not Phil Collins, but this artist named Phil Collins. And um, I remember his name because it's Phil Collins, but um, definitely problematic because it's this like white guy that's getting all the credit for this work that's been done like very collaboratively in the cinematic way like the editing and the like creation of this project I think I don't know I'd like to watch it and like think of the singers that we see or the faces on the screen as the artists in this case and kind of like if the attention economy is real to like give them our attention and give them like a lot of money to like share them. Does that sound good? Yeah, can we lovely. can we do that? Thanks. I lost the okay. again. Is it over by you? Oh I didn't sorry. And to reach in the We don't have to watch the whole hour, but just watch a little bit. In a sense of generosity. Shines is my sound, 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 sh
Just want to check and see if this next person is next. Person. So 
screen planning is amazing. I was just like trapped. Yes. No, this one. Oh.